Oh, good morning. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the organization. Well, uh, this talking uh, has has a motivation. Uh, one work work done by Silk and his collaborators done in 2009, and. The, the, main, the main aim of the work was to find uh, what happened if you have the annihilation and the decay of dark matter near a black hole, and if you can, um, if, if, if you can see something related to, dark, to, um, to high energies to be detected by this annihilation near black holes. Okay, um, the first step they done was to test that with um, classical particles. Then what they saw that, that you can see really high energy particles accelerated by black holes, by you have a very fine tuned, a very fine tuned, tuned um, uh, situation to, to take that. Uh, so, here we will discuss if solitary black holes could be cosmic batteries, as we are uh, discussing here in this, in this event, uh, in this event, and if it, ca it if it could accelerate high energy particles, as for example, ultra high energies, uh, cosmic rays, or not. Okay. Then we will see also the. The situation with magnetic fields, if, if you add magnetic fields, you could um, um, facilitate or not this acceleration. Then the overview of the, the presentation, uh, we will talk a, a little bit about black holes as predicted by IGR or general relativity, uh, astrophysical observations, and if GR and astrophysical black holes are the same thing. Because, uh, as Professor Blandford said in the first talk, um, really, uh, w w there, there are many discussions about that. And, yeah, probably we converged in, the, um, in, a, main, um, in, in a main picture about, about this nowadays, but uh, I, we will discuss a little bit about that. Um, astroparticle acceleration mechanism. Um, we will not discuss a uh, fundament of the astroparticle acceleration mechanisms, but we will discuss the role of a solitary black hole, if it's possible, to accelerate, uh, for example, an ultra high energy cosmic ray. And, and we know that uh, so, uh, some of the ultra high energy cosmic rays, uh, the source is the center of AGNs, and the question is, um, a solitary black hole could produce it? Could, it, could a, a, a solitary black hole produce it? And, and then we will discuss about the role of the black hole spin and the role of the, the black hole with magnetic fields. OK, then I, I will present here three uh, definitions of black holes, just to illustrate. The first one is an old one. It said, surely nothing can be blacker than a black hole. The very redshift that makes the collapsing star appear to freeze also makes it darker, darken and become black. In the continuum approximation, where one ignores the discreteness of photons, the intensity of the radiation received by Received by the standard observers decreases exponentially as time passes. Then uh, there's a uh, definition about how you form black holes from stars, then and how you um, make these collapsing stars black. To and this this is definition is from uh, the book Gravitation uh, from Ms. Tor Misner, Torn, Wheeler. Um, second one is. A black hole is the, this is the second is the third is the uh, the main um, the act, actual main definitions. A black hole is defined in simply as a region of space time that cannot communicate with the external universe. The boundary of this region is called the surface of the black hole or the 
Event Horizon. This is from Shapiro, Tilkowski, Black Holes, White Dwarfs, and Neutron Stars. And finally, from a book, a recent book, um, a black hole is, roughly speaking, a region of the space-time in which gravity is so strong that nothing, nor, nor even light, can escape. The even event or horizon is the boundary of such a region. Okay, then we saw, oh, it's speaking uh, uh, mainly for students, you saw that um, we have a situation of collapse and we have a situation of formation of, of event horizon and what are those things. Uh, here we have these pictures, a very f famous picture that appear in, uh, in, a, in a movie. Um, I, probably everyone here saw it. It's based on a real, uh, sim a real simulation of a care black hole with a very a small, um, a small creation disk. And you have here the effect of um, of the lensing. Okay, that, uh, yeah, it, it's it's in the, the wrong part of the, the presentation. I will first present uh, the black hole, the black holes, <coughs> as they are solved by GR or general relativity. And after I will, I will present some of the pictures, recent pictures uh, on astrophysical observations. Uh, in black holes. In GR, um, we have uh, many kind of solutions. Uh, we have a plane of solutions that can be described as black holes. Okay, but there are three of them. There are the main uh, solutions. The first one is a static solution, name it Schwarzschild, a Schwarzschild solution. Um, this static solution pre uh, have a singularity and in R equals zero, but we have also um, horizon. This horizon is located at uh, 2gm, or 2gm over c squared. Uh, this is um, or, or 2m. Okay, uh, uh, from here we, we, we use the things that in general relativity is is, is called. Uh, natural units that make C equal one and G equal one, okay. Then it's, uh, you, you have an event horizon at 2M. Well, we have this situation, that's a Reisner's Nordstrom uh, solution. The solution is a static, but has a charge, but has a charge, and the start charge appears here. Well, when you make the charge E make equal zero, then you recover the Schwarzschild solution. Okay. The, the third one is or a care or a care Newman uh, solution. Uh, the difference between those two solutions that care is um, a vacuum black hole solution with rotation solely, and Carl Newman is, uh, is the same but with charge. And here is the solution of Kerr, it's the metric, the Kerr metric. And this Kerr metric uh, is, is commonly viewed as um, a singularity with two horizons, an uh, inner horizon and an external horizon. And also a region named ergosphere or ergo region. Okay, then I will return for <laughs> the okay. Sorry, here astrophysical. Okay. Well, what about astrophysical black holes? Astrophysical black holes, as so mainly in the centers of AGNs, the center of galaxies in general. And they are supermassive black holes. Uh, here, here you see, for example, the, the effect of jets as uh, many talks um, um, told us about jets. And um, here in the center of this galaxy, you have a uh, accretion disk. Well, here's a picture of a accretion disk. And 
Okay, this is a recent um, um, work that tells us about the center of our galaxy. The center of our, our galaxy has a, a supermassive black hole, but, so, but um, uh, surrounded by other black holes, as Felix was, was telling. Uh, here is the, um, the thing that's called the AGN paradigm. What, uh, AGN has a black hole, uh, uh, a creation disk, as I said, but also there's a torus, torus of dust, and depending the, the angle of viewing, you can see different uh, objects. And it, it's the same obje object, but the ob observation can be viewed by different angles. Then you, you can say it's a cipher, or it's a quas quasar, or etc. blazar. Okay, and you ha you have also we have also the possibility of micro quasars, as Felix Mirabel 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 um, explained uh, yesterday or yesterday. Oh, for, was it yesterday? No, it was was, was um, two days ago. Okay, then it, it's the same structure as as Felix explained it: a black hole in center, and you have the situation of a star that is given material uh, to be consumed by this black hole, and then you produce jets, and you produce luminosity, and you produce UV. Uh, in this case, it's X-rays. Then, well, uh, we can compare astrophysical versus GR black holes, and we will saw, and we will see that astrophysical black holes, uh, no, none of all GR black holes could be astrophysical black holes, um, according to observations. Then, astrophysical black holes and GR black holes are ident identical. Oh, fundamentally, astrophysical black holes have some of the care black hole properties. Um, as, uh, for example, it appears that at least astrophysical black holes have spin. The question is, uh, astrophysical black holes have, ma have uh, charge. Have, have astrophysical black holes charge? Um, no charge. Um, there's no charge are, are, are observed, but the spin and mass are observed. Well, Care black hole, care Newman black holes have three paramet parameters: uh, mass, spin, and charge. Okay, but only mass and spin are observed astrophysically. And the spin uh, here is the adimensional spin. Okay, I divide it here by m. Um, the spin of black hole is this parameter p uh, a of the spin of the black hole is. Uh, proportional to the angular momentum of the black hole, it's in the um, in the Kerr situation, it's bounded by uh, it's it's uh, bounded by one. It's um, and okay. There are many observation techniques to constrain the value of this a. And here here are presented some works that constrain, and it's surveyed by this. Uh, or Kalbambi. And for example, we, ha we have here many black holes with uh, A um, going from 0.6 to 0.996, okay? And some with high, um, high spin. When you have a situation when spin is greater than 0.99, we call those black holes uh, critical black holes, critical care black holes. And we will see that in the case of those, this work of silk and collaborators, these critical black holes are essential to, to accelerate particles. Here are the case of SLR mass black holes. And, but we are interested in, um, in supermassive in the present presentation. Okay, uh, I just put here the, the case of um, uh, gravitational wave observations because they constrain uh, mass of black holes and uh, they, saw, they, they, they tell us something about this. 
and about the merger of black holes and their resultant mass. Okay. <clears throat> well, other weighted care black hole properties. Uh, we, we need these properties because we, I will present to you now the calculation that tests if, us, uh, if, a, if particles can be accelerated to high energy or ultra high energy by a, soli or a sol solitary black hole. Well, we have um, those awaited properties. Uh, space time is stationary. And care, the care solution uh, awaited for killing vectors. The killing vectors tell us about uh, symmetries. We have time symmetry and we have axial symmetry, and we know that uh, they guarantee us conservation of energy and conservation of momentum, angular momentum. And where are located the horizons? Well, if you want to calculate the horizons, then you go back here to this um, to, to the solution, then make this delta um, tending to zero, and you can find two two horizons. And this is the inner case. This is the outer case. They they are okay. Uh, uh, the inner case is uh, we have a, a minus and uh, the outer case you have a plus. Um, the ego region, the ego region, it depends from this axial, from this uh, azimuthal angle, theta. Okay, and concerning circular orbits, there are, there are particularly this inner uh, stable circular orbit, we call it up for now, ISCO. And they say, they say if, if, you, if you have a particle that comes here around a black hole, um, what is the, the last stable orbit before this particle goes to the black hole? The last stable orbit is this ISCO. Uh, I will tell you something about how uh, we, we can calculate where the ISCO uh, of a Schwarzschild and a Kerr black hole is. <clears throat> OK, then we have the situation. The observational situation is that we have ultra high energy cosmic rays with energy uh, like 10 to 12 electron volts. Um, what are the sources of these guys? And, and how do they accelerate? Uh, yesterday, Luis was doing the question, um, who, uh, how is the mechanism of acceleration of, for example, particles uh, that goes in a jet? Uh, what's the origin? What's the nature? Then it's, uh, <clears throat> and the main sources, we, we ask it about the main sources and how it could be. The main sources is uh, explained mainly by uh, the HeLa um, plot. This is the HeLa plot. Um, and we have AGN and other. And in AGN uh, environment, we did invoke many acceleration mechanisms. Um, many of those was explained by Professor Blanford in his lecture. For example, Fermi mechanism, external shock phase, unipolar inductors, magnetic reconnection, uh, reacceleration, shearage jets, etc., and other proposed in recent literature. And, and well, I, I, I initiate telling you that I believe in, in those uh, mechanisms. I, I, I think that the, the main mechanisms to obtain the ultra high energy cosmic rays uh, indeed are those mechanisms. Okay, but. Um, now we will explore the situation that if one black hole, okay, imagine one black hole without disk, without jets, without magnetic fields. In, in, in the beginning, we will work without magnetic fields. If this black hole can accelerate particles from energies higher than uh, or high as 10 to 12 electron volts. 
okay, then here we will work from a solely by a GR perspective. Um, the minimum conditions that allow the black holes to behave as accelerator, we will explain, and the main conditions uh, we will see that are guided by P B uh, black hole spin, angular momentum from particles, then we, we will uh, put test particles in this environment and see what happens to those test particles if they accelerate and where they uh, is uh, allow it to accelerate and we see if the presence of magnetic fields um, interfere or not damp or accelerate more those particles <clears throat> okay the first thing is that uh, black hole gravity is enough to trap light we saw by those definitions and gravity can act uh, both in neutral as in charged particles and then black holes can accelerate both of them nevertheless static black holes as chart as the solution of Schwarzschild we we, we show it uh, I show it you um, cannot accelerate black holes um, uh, for a simple reason um, because he is its ice isco or its um, inner stable circular orbit is uh, located at 6m then you, when you compare Schwarzschild with a Kerr black hole we see that f we, we will see that for uh, higher speeds the e score of care um, is very close, can be very close to the horizon that we will proportionate um, the possibility of acceleration of particles if a particle enters in this, if a particle enters in this, in this environment. Okay, here we will uh, work with two particles. Uh, one of the particle, the particle number one, we will call it critical particle. The critical particle, we will see, it has a critical angular momentum. And the second particle will shock with this first one in, uh, in, some, in some region. Uh, this region depend, depends on the spin of the black hole and where the ice core is located. Okay, well, just... Um, just a rabbit note on Schwarzschild. If you want to find where the, uh, the ISCO is located, then imagine a particle that comes from infinite, okay, then solve this ener energy uh, equation, you know, uh, kinetics and uh, effect, an effective potential. And, and when, you, when you make V equals zero, you will find and and the uh, derivative of v equals zero and for a Schwarzschild or a, a, a black hole without spin then you will see that the unstable, unstable orbits are located uh, between 3m and 6m and the stable orbits are greater than 6m okay and then 6m is the last stable orbit then what happens is that uh, Schwarzschild black holes in the situation um, when a particle approach or uh, two particles are collided next close to the, the horizon the, um, the energy is not sufficient to, to accelerate particles to this high energy um, imagined situation. Okay. <clears throat> Then we have to work with care black holes to accelerate particles. In the case of the care spin, um, we, we saw that it's bounded, uh, it's less than one. Uh, we, we, we have talked about that. Well, we have to calculate the geodesics around those black holes. <clears throat> And with those geodesics and with the conservation of energy and angular momentum, and then we can find the critical values 
of two of two uh, particles that are approaching uh, this black hole. The thing is that uh, we, we can calculate the, the energy of the center of mass of those two approaching particles. And in this, uh, in this calculation, we will see uh, that one of, this, the, one of the, those particles have the energy and the angular momentum in, in the um, in, 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 uh, in the equation that if you equals um, the angular momentum and if you equals the energy of this particle and the angular momentum uh, multiplied by the the rotational velocity of this, this particle, then you can find these critical values. These critical values is what are the maximum values that those particles that's approaching black holes uh, could have. And they are constraining in those two values. Um, minus two um, multiplied by one plus squared by one plus a and the positive case. <coughs> well, uh, here then one example of geodesics for uh, one, one particle approach in a black hole, a, a care black hole, we can see that um, for some angular momentum situations and for this case a critical black hole or a, a black hole with this maximum spin, it can approach um, the, um, one of the horizons and here the velocity of this, this this particle um, goes exponentially when approaches the, the when it approaches the, the horizon. Well, when we have the situation of a non-critical black hole, for example, a black hole one with 0 0.7, um, then this particle comes smoothly uh, into the 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 horizon, then we will not accelerate this guy. And here uh, we can calculate the effective potential to see where is the ice core of those care black holes, if, it, if it's approaching or not the horizon. Because uh, in general relativity, if you have a particle that is coming close to the horizon, we know that in the horizon uh, we have new geodesics. And then for, for that, for, because of that, you can accelerate these particles to the velocity of, to the speed of light. Um, and this is what uh, Silken collaborators saw, and many people are, uh, be, be come to work on that, um, because it's, it's like an alternative uh, is an alternative to uh, Penrose process. In the case of Penrose process, uh, Penrose is, is um, solely mechanical, a mechanical process. Here we, we have a mechanical process. But in case of um, Penrose process, it, we can calculate that the ergo region has um, negative energy. Then uh, two particles that approach and, and collide uh, close to the ergo region. If one of them goes to the ergo region, ergo region then the other one will goes up with uh, energy uh, greater than the, the particles that collide before. Well, then uh, in, this, in this case we are seeing an alternative to the Penrose processes because Penrose processes, um, I don't know, uh, it it become it become um, a thing. It became a thing very uh, interesting in the 70s, but after uh, I don't know, P Professor Blanford can say it about that. But after people, uh, I think that people uh, stopped at work with that and goes more to the electromagnetic magnetic um, uh, case. Uh, that means to work with Blanford Janiak uh, process but acceleration of massive particles um, as in a mechanical process as the Penrose process, uh, I, I believe that people uh, stopped to work with that 
in in the 80s, I think. Okay, <clears throat> then. Uh, with the potential, we can see where are the, the ISCO of, of the black hole for many, many spins. For example, here we have three spins, and you saw in the, the table presented by Bambi that um, those, spin, th those two spins uh, could be described as realistic astrophysical black holes. Uh, they are properties of realistic astrophysical black holes. And this one is not a, reali a realistic because um, in the 70s uh, uh, as well, uh, Kip Thorne calculated that uh, by uh, creation mechanism concerns that um, uh, the, the greatest value of uh, a spin is 0.998. Yeah, 0.998, and this critical value, it's not realistic. But there, there, are, there are many people that are discussing if uh, you, could, um, and you could see um, a critical situation, and there are people that um, claim it that this is possible, but, um, uh, well, then if you have a critical value, the the black hole, this black hole, we have uh, ISCO very close to to the horizon, and then we can have a particle that is approaching, then can probably accelerate. Well, this is the calculation we can we can we can work for the energy of the center of mass of two particles. And if you put one of the particles with, uh, with a certain uh, mo angular momentum and the other particle with the critical angular momentum, then we will see situations like that. The energies blow up and you could accelerate such particles to very high energies. And here one of the things that we are working nowadays that um, what the role of magnetic fields. The magnetic fields could accelerate more or not those uh, particles in critical, um, critical black holes, in crit critical care black holes. Then here we, ha here we have a critical black hole with um, three uh, situations uh, in concerning magnetic fields. Well, how, how we put magnetic fields in the, the equation? Well, we have um, for classical particles, we describe a Lagrangian, a Lagrangian with uh, charged particles and with magnetic in in a um, environment with magnetic fields. So, uh, in this case, we can um, we can see that um, the Dalbertian of uh, of killing vectors is equal to zero. Then we can use a gauge for the the potential vector as we as we usually uh, do for for the case um, of a, a classical a classical situations in electromagnetism in electrodynamics then with this gauge we can uh, we, we we can choose um, some potential vectors um, that are proportional to to the magnitude of magnetic fields that are present in the environment so, um, with this Lagrangian, then we can um, we can calculate the equation of motion, equations of motion, and we also can have constraints to to find the um, the R point and to find to find the, geo, the geo, geodesics of the those particles. So, uh, here is a situation where we have no magnetic fields. It's the situation I explained it before. This velo the velocity of these particles blows up as well, but uh, the, the, velocity of the, the, the velocity of the particles blows up as well with magnetic fields, but uh, we, we saw that um, for strong magnetic fields, 
this could not happen. Uh, we, 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 we begin to work with magnetic fields because in, after the publication of Silk, many people said something like, well, this is not realistic. This thing of a accelerator particle near the horizon, it's not realistic. But you can probably put magnetic fields in the environment, then you will they will push the particles to become more close to the horizon uh, due to the magnetic fields. Then you can obtain those high energy uh, acceleration. But um, we saw that um, for uh, small magnetic fields, it could be possible, it, it could include the help in acceleration, the acceleration process, but when you uh, puts magnetic fields with uh, greater magnitudes, uh, those particles um, are accelerated in, in, region, in a region uh, that is not close to the horizon. Then it's probably because of that um, the magnetic fields, as greater they are, uh, the, the environment become random um, um, uh, electromagnetically speaking and when you calculate the case of the energy of the center of mass for for two particles that collide in some in some place close to the horizon then we see that uh, for magnetic fields uh, it it is not work then then probably uh, magnetic fields in this case it is not a um, uh, a good idea to accelerate particles in this environment so um, we can we can uh, do some discussions about uh, what I was uh, telling about uh, telling you uh, the first one is that. Black holes can work as accelerators in this picture, but the problem is that the conditions described here not necessarily can produce ultra high energy cosmic rays. And there is, there is only one uh, condition that can produce all, uh, ultra high energy cosmic rays. I will relate to you, uh, to you uh, this condition. In, in, in the point in his point here, but mm, uh, to guarantee ultra high energy cosmic rays, you indeed have to um, to consider as mandatory mechanisms as, as shocks, unipolar injection, magnetic reconnection, etc. In the environment around the black hole. Okay, the black hole then. Is, is black hole cosmic batteries in this in this case? Yes, black holes are are cosmic batteries, but they they are the base, the gravitational base, the gravitational fundament to to make this accretion disk, the jets, and the behavior of the magnetic fields works as they work. But if you if you have no uh, plasma for it, probably if you have no plasma around black holes, then we will cannot uh, accelerate particles to the energy of ultra high energy energy cosmic rays. Okay, however, rapidly rotating black holes, the critical case, can accelerate particles to arbitrarily high energy if but if in only if one of the particles has a critical momentum. And so, uh, this is a situation that is a, a fine-tuned momentum. And we don't know if in nature we have this th things like that. Um, a particle that has a critical momentum, fine-tuned momentum that's coming close to the black hole then, and then can be accelerated. Uh, literature points to some supermassive black holes in AGN, as we saw. Um, with a spin greater than 0.99, and but as I as I said, um, the limit of imposed by Thorn by equation uh, upper limits 
is 0.998 for astrophysical black holes. <clears throat> well, uh, a work of Berti and all also point at back reaction effects and sensitivity to initial conditions impose severe limits on the likelihood of such picture. But in any case, if you calculate the, the killing time, okay, if you, if you get, if you take, take the, the equation for gr over dt, um, dt uh, being the, 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 the normal time, not the proper time of, of then you will, uh, you can calculate the killing uh, time, and you will see that the that the killing time is regarded as big as the age of the universe to produce ultra high energy um, cosmic rays. Then the w one of the conclusions is that uh, can you produce ultra high energy cosmic rays for a solitary black hole? The, qu the the answer is yes, you can, but you. Will, will demand the age of the universe to produce that. Then um, we cannot believe in, in systems that with a solitary black hole are working as accelerate, a super accelerators uh, to produce the observed ultra high energy cosmic rays. And it appears that small values of fine tuning magnetic fields could help in process of acceleration only in case of critical A's, but uh, as I showed you, showed you, great values, however, will damp the, the deceleration. And gravitational radiation also should be considered, considered as pointed by Jacobson and Sutilio, and it also could damp the, the deceleration, and because the particle is approaching to a black hole that probably is radiating um, gravitational waves. Okay, and then um, I conclude here. I thank you very much, and um, and I hope uh, I, I hope that um, uh, works with uh, solitary black holes are, are interesting and they, they are important. Okay, because we can. Um, understand the basic physics of general relativistic black holes and correlated it, them with astrophysical black holes, but um, we can see that um, a general relativ relativistic black hole, the solitary rel relativistic black hole, uh, is, is not enough to accelerate particles to explain the, the ultra-high energy cosmic rays as observed by Auger and other uh, experiments. Thank you.